This is part six of my how-to videos. This one is how to do cables. There's two ways of doing cables. There's the one that twists this direction and there's the one that twists this direction. This one is considered a front cable twist and this is a back cable twist. To look at how they were abbreviated, we start with our abbreviation. A lot of times you'll see CBL standing for cable with F for the front or CBL for cable back or they'll abbreviate it as CF for cable front, CB for cable back. They would put a number in front of these. So like this would be three, which means you hold three stitches in front, or here they do two, and that would be two stitches held in back. And this is the way it would read. Slip three stitches to the cable needle, that's what CN is, and hold in front of work. Knit the three stitches off the left-hand needle, then the three off the cable needle. Now this one would be in back. It could be the same amount of stitches or it could be different. I'm gonna say this is two, two cable stitches. So slip two stitches, this is incorrect. This should be CN like that, cable needle, and hold in back of work. Then knit two stitches off the left needle and then the two stitches off the cable needle. Now these are some of the different things you can use for cable needles. This one is the most common, but it's a very thin one, as you can see, and I don't like to work with the little thin ones. And they also have ones that are shaped like the J. They have this in two sizes. Or it can actually be, they consider a cable needle, which is a very short double-pointed needle. But as you can see, it's as thin as those. And if you're working with larger needles, these sometimes don't work as well for me. So I usually get an actual double-pointed needle about one size smaller than the needle that I'm working with. So if this is a 10, this would be a nine. If this was an eight, this would be a seven. So this is the needle I'm gonna be using. So we'll start with our first pattern. I've already done the first part of it. I've knitted the four rolls of garter, which is here. And I've done the first two rolls of the pattern. Now, as you can see, rolls three and four, you're gonna repeat rolls one and two one time. So we're gonna go back and do these two rolls again. So we're going to start with trying to get this close by but yet not in the way. Okay, so now we're going to start with knit three. You can follow along on the pattern right there. Knit three. Now I'm not going super slow for this part because this is what we already know. This is just basic knitting and purling in specific number combinations. Now we're going to knit six. And sometimes they use um, the cable twist. Whoops, I'm missing one. The same amount on each row each time, or sometimes they'll use a different size cable amount partway through the work to give a different texture. But you just follow along with what the directions say. Try not to read too far ahead. Just stay within the first couple of um, de designations or instructions as you go, because if you start reading too far ahead, you'll get confused and you'll feel you won't be able to do the work and we definitely want you to be able to do the work. So right now I'm right here where I just purled one and I'm whoop, up here, purled one and I'm ready to knit three. Now we're going to go back into the back side, which is just the reverse. We're going to purl on the purls and knit on the knits. So with here where we started with a knit three, row two starts with a purl three because if you look here, these are purls on this side, but when we actually did them, they were knit. See how the smooth is on the front? And the bumps are on the back. So we're going to start here with purl three, knit one. And we're going to knit one. And then it says we need to purl four. So I never go more than a couple of directions ahead. Like since I'm purling four now, I would look at my pattern to see, oh, now I got to knit one. So now I can go around and knit one. And then I look over my pattern, oh, I'm purl three. So now I'll purl three. This way it keeps your hands in motion. You don't have to stop between each direction. So now we knit one, purl six. The reason I'm doing the three, the sixes and the fours is to show how to do a six stitch cable and a four stitch cable. They're done exactly the same way. It's just you would have less stitches when you do the four cable than you do when you do the six cable. Oops, I did something, yeah, that's right. Pearl, pearl, pearl. So now we're going to go down here where we're gonna do the cable roll where it says pearl three, no, knit three, pearl one. Now we're gonna do three cables to the back. 
Yeah, my cable needle. So here we go. We're going to start with our knit three. Let's get the ball of yarn on the other side. And then we're going to purl one. And there's the purl. Now we're going to do three cables to the back, which means we're going to take the first three stitches off and hold them in back of our work. And knit the next three off of the left hand needle. Got to get my yarn where it belongs. One, two, Takes a little practice holding three needles, but with a little bit of work, you'll be able to conquer it. Now you knit the three stitches off the sti of the cable needle. And as you can see, it causes it to twist. And you let the needle go. So now we're going to purl one, knit three. Then we purl one and do the two stitch cable, which is actually four stitches. Two stitches on one side and two stitches for the other. So we take two stitches this time instead of three. And we're going to knit two stitches. And go back, knit the two off the cable needle. And we're going to finish with a purl one, knit three. And then it says on row six, you repeat row two. So you go back up to row two, purl three, knit one, purl four, knit one. So if we turn our work around, you'll see there's the purl three, there's the knit one, and there's the purl four, knit one, purl three, and it goes back and forth across. And then it'll tell you for row seven through 12, repeat rows one through six. So we come back up here to one through six, and that's this one. Okay, I've already done the first back cable twist here. And here's rows one, two, three, and four, where we're doing this and this and repeating it. Now we're going to go down to do the cable. We'll do one more cable back so you can see how this cable back works one more time. So we start with knit three, purl one. Now we're going to do our cable back again. So take three stitches, hold them in back of your work, knit three, and then you take the three stitches off your cable needle. Just take your time, there's no rush, there's no hurry. It's a little tight because you're twisting stitches. Now we have to do purl one, knit three. Okay, and there's our purl one. So now we're going to do the two cables to the back. So we take two stitches, hold them in the back of our work, knit two, okay, oh, I dropped it, okay. Now we take the two off of the needle, the cable needle. And we're going to purl one, knit three. Okay, so now you can see we got two twists, both going the same direction. So now we're going to do the cable in the front, which is with three C F, which is three stitches to the front, and the next one is two stitches to the front. So we'll take this one. This one's all prepped and ready to go. So we start with knit three, purl one. Now this is where we're going to hold three stitches to the front. So we take our next three stitches and instead of putting them behind, we're going to put them in front of our work. And then we're going to knit the next three. This one is a little bit tighter than if you're doing the two. 
because you're crossing over more stitches. Now we're going to take the three stitches off this needle. They're a little tight, just take your time. Okay, now we're going to purl one knit three. And we'll purl one and then do the two cable to the front. And it's the same as the other one, but instead of doing the taking the two stitches and putting them behind, we're going to take the two stitches and put them in front. And then take the two off the double pointed needle or the cable needle, whichever you're using. Both of them will work just as well. You find the one that works best for you. Everybody has their comfort zone and I like you to use your comfort zone. Don't use mine. All right, so now we've completed row five. Row six, same thing as repeat row two. So you go back up to row two where you purl three, knit one, purl four. See, there's purl three, knit one. There's your purl four, knit one. Okay, we will go ahead and do it again. Okay, so now we're doing repeat row seven through 12, repeat one through six. So we come back up here to the top. Row one is purl three, knit three, purl one. And that's already been done right here because we've already done the, our twist here. We're, I just wanted for time's sake, just go straight into the cable roll. That's why I went ahead and did the first four ahead of time. So what we're gonna do is knit three Then it says purl one. Now we're going to do the three in the front again. So we're going to take our three stitches, place them in front of our work, and knit three. Now some individuals have trouble knitting the first three off of the cable needle because it's just kind of in their way. So you can cheat and put those three stitches back up on the left hand needle if you want. This is an option, but it's not a requirement and it's not necessary. And then you can knit them off that needle. That's another way to achieve the same thing. To me, it's a little bit tighter and I don't really enjoy doing it that way, but you might. Okay, so I did my purl one, now I gotta knit three. And then I purl one. Now we're going to do the two cable stitch in front where you take the two and hold them in front of your work. Knit the two off of your left hand needle. Then knit the two off of your cable needle. And I found if you use a needle about the same size, if you accidentally let it go, the stitches will stay on it. If you use a needle that's a little thinner or smaller, they have a tendency to fall off. And I don't like having to pick up stitches if I don't have to. So now we're doing the last three. And then you just keep repeating that over and over again. Keep repeating rows one through six until your scarf is the length you're looking for. So if I had all these together, you just keep going up and up until you get what you want. Now, what I've done on Ravelry, if you go to Ravelry.com, and either search by the Stitch Knit or search by Easy Cable Scarf, this part is off. Easy Cable Scarf Pattern, Pat. This pattern will come up, and it is free. All you have to do is download it, and this tells you it takes one ball, of Plymouth Encore, which I like, but any worsted weight yarn is fine. You need about 200 yards, and you do it on a size nine, nine inch straight needle, either size eight or size nine, your choice, plus a cable needle. I forgot to put that on there. But remember, you gotta get a cable needle too. The approximate width is gonna be about seven inches, but the length is your choice. And then here we go, we start here. Now see, when I did these ones to show you, I did not put, I didn't put the garter stitch border here. The garter stitch border, which is this here, will help keep your scarf laying reasonably flat. Without the garter border, it'll roll and curl. 
as you can see in here, see how it rolls up really easy. If you have your garter stitch border on either side, it'll help it lay flat. So when you read this one, it's going to say knit eight instead of knit three, and the rest is the same. But if you look on row two, you knit five, which is the five stitches for the garter border. Then you've got your purl three, which we just did. And you follow it across, and there's your purl three at the end. And there's your knit five for your garter border. Same thing again, rows three and four, repeat rows one and two. Then you do your cables. And this one, you're doing a cable in the back and a cable in the front. So it'll look like this. So you got your cables going different directions. Good luck and hope you have a chance to complete the pattern.